Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for a Vibe with Five special with Joel, Stephen, Rhea, and of course, our special guest, Mr. Jared Byrne. How you doing, man? You good? I'm all good. I should have said Conference me. League winner. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've got to put some respect Scored on your name. Winning. Scored the winning goal, by the way. Come on now, you know? Legend. How you feeling, man? Yeah, that uh, seems ages ago now. It was only in June, but I think because it end, happened end of the season, it's kind of the focus always switches then to the new season. So you have that kind of two weeks to enjoy it. Um, but then it's forget about it onto the onto the new season now. But that memory will always be there. That winning goal is... Uh, I don't think I could top that. How, how does it feel to kind of... Most players become legends when their career finishes. How does mm -hmm. it feel to be a legend in the midst of your career? No, yeah, it's a bit of a pinch me moment because I think until like we actually won that trophy, you actually kind of saw how much it meant. You probably we did probably didn't really get a gauge for it because you know I've never won a trophy before, so probably for myself as well, it was kind of a bit of a pinch me moment because you don't realise how special something is until you kind of win that trophy. Um, and then, like I said, you come you come home from Prague and see that that parade um, was. I don't really think you can put it into words. I think the pictures just, you could see it all, uh, all the people there lining up just on top of traffic lights, on top of random houses. Um, they were everywhere just to get two minutes of, of seeing us. So now it was, it was really special. You see everywhere you go now, like is, it, there's, listen, West Ham fans pop up everywhere. Black taxis in London. I don't know if you're getting them anymore. I don't know if football players do this, <laughs> but I get in black taxis on a regular basis and nine times out of 10, it's a West Ham fan going like that. And I've got to do it back and do pictures yeah. like that all the time, yeah. Because I grew up there. Is is that everywhere no, you go I now? I didn't realize how big it, how big the club was. Um, like you said, I think there's there's fans everywhere. Like where I live at the minute, um, there's like a few buildings going next to me, and everyone's a West Ham fan. And I think I said no, like Tottenham fans, or maybe they don't want to tell me they're a Tottenham fan. But that is not. Um, <laughs> there's West Ham fans everywhere. So it's, I didn't realize how big a magnitude the club was was probably on when I first came to be honest but now I'm starting to as I feel like one of them almost um, I'm starting to get a feel for it and starting to feel right actually this is a massive club can, 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 can I just we take you back because I think we we're, we love all the stuff that you've done now and we massively respect what you guys achieved last season and you was obviously one of the main kingpins in doing that but I'd just like to take you back because I think your story is quite a unique story in that where you started at Hereford how you were signed then to Hull and your journey then has been like fantastic. But just take us back to the beginning because there's a lot of young people that will be watching this and get this gets shared around this type of interview. Just the trials and tribulations you would have gone through to get to this point, especially when you started at Hereford. Yeah. Um, so I was obviously at my local team where I was brought up. It was called Lempster Miners. Um, and Hereford was kind of the, the academy. Um, and then I kind of came through there and there was like a YTS kind of plan but that kind of got scrapped after, I think it was about six months due to no money. And I think a lot of the lads were, I think it was like £80 a week back then. And a lot of the lads didn't get the money. And obviously back then we were like devastated. We got told the youth team was getting scrapped, um, got told to go elsewhere. I went to Cardiff for six weeks on a trial, um, thought I'd done well. Got They told me no. Uh, Hereford told me no. So there was a stage for, I think it was about six weeks where I didn't have a club. Um, and I was kind of like, I don't know what to do because all in school, I was just, I'm going to play football. That's it. There's, you know, where back in Hereford, you don't really get loads of opportunities in terms of the window where it is. Not really many people have, you know, come out and played football from it. Um, so I was, I think you always need a slice of luck in football. And where I was lucky, my youth team manager went to the first team because the first team couldn't pay, you know, a manager to come in and take over for the second half of the season. So, I was lucky enough that my youth team manager played me for, I think it was eight games in the conference. Um, and then one of them games, there was a man called Tony Pennock, who was um, academy manager at Hull City, came to watch, um, had a few conversations. And then before you know it, I was signing signing for Hull. So it's just, you know, I think you got, I think you write your own luck, but I think it's when you, you do get that luck, it's about taking that chance. And then, you know, from there I've gone to Hull, which in itself was four hours from Hereford. I was like, what am I doing all the way up here? Um, was there for, for six years, played nearly 130 games, I think. And then obviously to West Ham now. So it's, it's probably just been a bit of a bit of a pinch me moment now because I probably don't realize it because I'm in the bubble that 
actually how far I've come. You know, my mum, my dad are always on to me, like, look at where you've come from kind of thing. But I'm just focused on playing my game. So I never kind of actually sit back and take back where I've probably come from. Take us back to that then. So 16, 17 years of age, you've been launched out of the academy, told you're not good enough at Cardiff. From that moment to 10 years later now where you've won a trophy and you're having people kicking off that you're not in the England squad, that's a hell of a ride to go on. And Rio said it's a bit of a unique story, but I don't think it is a unique story. I think there's more and more players that are getting some level of National League or, or non-league experience and it's really standing them in good stead as they go through the leagues. I want to know what, what did training look like? 10 years ago when you're getting launched out of those academies? What are you doing that's going to separate yourself at that time? Do you know what? I think I was just, I was probably in just stuck in a bit of a limbo. Like I don't know what I'm doing here because I've got nothing to go to college with. I've got no grades to go to college with. I've, I've only wanted to ever play football. Um, so it was kind of, I was just, just waiting around and just seeing what was happening. I knew there was like a few murmurs here and there of obviously, Hereford starting back up um, but from that Cardiff one as well I probably put all my eggs in one basket there and thought I'd done really well and then for them to say no as well um, I think I was just then just thinking right there's got to be a backup plan there's got to be something um, obviously I loved football but I thought it was kind of slowly getting taken away from me because you know all my avenues were probably getting shut off um, and like I just said I had that slice of luck with Hereford re kind of rebooting for six months and then a few little twists and turns here and there, managers going, coming in. Um, and then I just got my chance. And, you know, it was in, in the conference, which was definitely an eye-opener. Um, I, I saw my old manager at the game the other day and we were talking about we went to Welling United away on a Tuesday night. Um, so it was definitely, yeah, it was, a, it was an eye-opener. But I think for me, it was probably the best thing for me. And I think many players would agree that going out and playing men's football um, and getting that feel for the environment, what it means to win, um, I think is so much better for players development and I think it's really helped me kind of want to be in that that winning structure but also stands on my own two feet a bit as well with you know in a changing room of winners you know when you talk about um, um, playing and, and getting the games and you look at yourself and you say right it's I'm not getting the games now like you say it's taken away from you for a period of time what do you then do in your spare time? What was the type of training was you doing? Because I think that's important because some people just say, if the training's not there, I just don't do it. Was you someone who'd get up and go yourself or what was you doing? Give us some examples. Yeah, I was always I was always playing football, whether that be where I lived, there was a little basketball court, you know, the little, little five-a-side kind of things where I'd have my mates trying to play and or whether it would be my little brother and we'd go out and just get a field, get a ball, get a couple of jumpers, jumpers for goalposts, that old saying, and just go out and play football. Um, like I said, I, I've always loved football and I've never lost that love for it, but I know it can probably be difficult. And there's probably times where I was like, Do you know what, this has been shut, this has been shut. Maybe it's it's not for me. Maybe it's, you know, this isn't going to work out for me. But I think I've you, you've always got that, even if it's that 2% inside you that's telling you, no, you're, you're good enough, you can do this. Um, this is your journey, just beat down any obstacle that's in your way. So I think going out for me, it was just going to play football. Um, you know, I wasn't having the games, but I was just going out and enjoying playing football. And then for me, my mindset was if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. All I can do is control it as much as much as I can. Then if things come up, then it's about me taking my chance again, doing everything that I thought I'd done right before. Jared, I heard somewhere that your uh, your dad was heavily involved in getting you up to speed with uh, men's football. What kind of mad stuff did he have you doing, man? <laughs> well, we're obviously like a farming background. So he had me uh, doing stuff with potatoes because those bags of potatoes are heavy. Um, he had me on like a little cement mixer, um, so the cement mix is in, you go in with a new wheelbarrow, fill it up with cement, take it up this hill. And this hill I'm talking is like that. It's not like... <laughs> well, vertical. It is like that. <laughs> 45 degrees. Oh, uh, it is lit. Yeah, literally, he's making me run up there um, with this cement in. And cement's heavy, so I'm running up there with that. Uh, he's got me in potato fields um, because he said he always says to me, oh, it's better for your, for your joints, for your bones. Because I never... <laughs> I never... I had an academy structure, but I never done the like the prep that you have nowadays, like the activation. Because um, when I went to Hull, my body was just like, not shutting down, but I had six months out of football. Um, so that kind of, he saw that as an opportunity to go, right, we need to strengthen you up. 
and he's always sworn by the potato fields and the old like farmers grounds are much better for you because they're they're harder they strengthen you up like your your ankles your knees everything um and he's sworn by it so he's got me doing like i said cement he's got me with potato bags he's had me with a roller that you roll a pitch with um he's had me pulling that from one end of a pitch to another so yeah, he's been having me do some mad stuff along along the years. We didn't do it this year. Ah. You know, with the babies, I said, right, I need I need a break for two weeks. Um, but it, oh, so have, that, you, have, you been, so have you been doing to, it even since you signed for Hull and you get to West Ham? Obviously, got an England squad. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in your time off and pre seasons, you were doing this type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I every year, That's every mad. year without fail. Wow. I've always thought you was a little bit built. I thought, raw, like, I thought it was just like in the jeans and that, but it makes sense now. It makes perfect nah, sense. No, nah, always, always in that off season, whether it be just for a week, because I try and go back home for a week or so. He's like, he's, it's like I call it, uh, I call my dad Dingle. Um, so I call it Dingle's boot camp. Yeah, um, I go yeah. there for a week and then. Uh, I think we need to go hey? next time he goes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, we know come and film that in the free season, man. I need to see that. I was going to do that with someone else, and yeah, they're yeah, talking come. private jets and stuff like that. But you're talking farmland. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, come on the farmland. I have to give you some potatoes to take back with as well <laughs> for the journey. Joe, what's the difference? You go from Hereford, and when did Hereford um, close down? By the way, because it was around about the time you was coming through there, wasn't it? When literally when I left. I remember we played Aldershot in the last game of the season to stay up in the conference. We were like, right, if we win this game, the money's going to come through, the club's going to stay afloat um, and it'll all be good. So it was literally that summer um, because I think that's why I went for no money because I wasn't getting paid. Um, so it gave me the opportunity to just go to Hull for free. Um, so that was, I can't remember what year, was that 2014? I, believe, I think it was like summer 2014, 15, I think. Is when I when they folded. When you go from Hereford National League, which is a tasty league, was Hull in the Championship at the time? It was when they played Arsenal in the FA Cup final. So I don't know if they just got relegated or they just went up. It was one of the two. I can't remember. What's the differences that you're seeing? Because I'm I'm sure there's going to be loads of things that you know is immediately on the training ground. What's the first things that you're seeing where you go, oh, we've stepped up here? I think like I go back to that that day-to-day -day basis of like a routine and a structure i never had that um you know the food every like i was at hereford we'd finish training and me and my mate would go to morrison's and get like a three pound meal deal because it was next to the train station and go back because that was there was no chefs there was no food um so we were just kind of yeah eating eating whatever so that kind of probably that structure and that discipline really um it probably was the main things for me I think obviously the football and that you pick up as you go, you build relationships with your teammates, you have an understanding of you know, what's required for you. But I think that self-discipline on a day-to-day -day basis was something that I've never, I, never experienced before, obviously in my academy days. Unfortunately, the Morrison's uh, meal deal has gone up now, unless you got a Morrison's card, which is a little bit yeah, disappointing. I know, I know. But, um, Someone told me the other day. Moving it on, right? West Ham. I, I want to focus on it now. Yeah. Rio. Mm. First of all, thank you very much for selling Arsenal Declan Rice. Fantastic addition to our team. <laughs> but it has to be said that West Ham have invested very, very well. Now, were you a little bit worried? Like if you're seeing like, you know, one of your key players going and you thought, ah, oh, yes, you're going to get good money, but how are you going to be able to replace him? Such big boots to fill as well. What were your thoughts, honestly? Yeah, no, obviously I was, I was gutted, but I think it was... You know, it was always the saga every window that was deck going, was deck not going. Uh, but to replace deck, I think is is impossible. You see how what he does for England, how well he's done for Arsenal at the start. I think his quality speaks for himself, um, and he's just gone on and probably shown even more people what he can do. So of course it was difficult, but I think the one thing with with our club now is we've always bought the kind of the right people to fit a dressing room. So. You know, it was about investing wisely to get people in that obviously have done their qualities on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well, because the manager's really, really tight on that that culture in in the dressing room that he thinks can bring bring out the best results in us. So I think who we've brought in in terms of you know Ward Prowse and, and Alvarez in in the middle of they've looked like they've been there for for five years, but I think because that's everyone's made them feel so welcome, and it's kind of a club that's easy to get in in with a group as well. Um, so I think that's why we they've kind of hit the ground running. What, what's, what, what's actually impressed you with them individuals, the new recruits that have come in? I mean, 
Um, we've seen they've, they've, they look, you look at, I think you look a really, really good team. Uh, uh, the recruitment has been really impressive in that sense. They're only early days in the season, but they've hit the ground running. What, what, what's impressed you most about each of those players? Oh, there's different qualities for each one. I think you see Prousey and, you know, people probably only think that because he's set pieces, he's only good at set pieces, but you see his quality in the games, um, what, what he can do to affect a game. And you even saw the goal he scored the other day, like arriving late in the box. People would never, really, never probably think that of Prousey. And obviously Edson as well, he's kind of that holding midfielder that's a bit of a destroyer. I remember his first training, I was like, this guy just wants to smash everyone. He was running rounds and he was just clamping everyone in sight. And we were like, this is what we need. We need a bit of a bit of fight in that middle of the pitch because it's a big area, especially losing deck. It's a massive player to lose. And I think to for life without without deck, so to speak, we had to invest it wisely because you know we knew the quality of player that we were losing. And like I said, it's it's probably difficult to find an out and out replacement for deck because I don't see many better than deck um in, in what he does. So it was about being clever with the signings um, and I think the recruitment that we've done, like I said, we've started really well um, and I think the signings have all played their part to, because sometimes it can take a bit of time to find the feet and, you know, take a few months to settle and settle in with a new culture, new environment. But, you know, like I said, I feel like they've been here for five years or so and they've really helped the team to obviously the start that we've had, I think. You just mentioned Declan there and just a quick one, just a side note. Where does he stand in the best CDMs in the Premier League right now, would you say? He's going to say number one. It's I think name. it's him wait, and wait, 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 wait. I want to hear it from himself. Go on. If he's going to say I want to be here to hear it. Go on. Go on, Jared. I think Deck. I think the only one that's on a level with Deck is Rodri, personally. <laughs> I think. Personally, <laughs> I think. You've obviously got Casemiro as well at United, um, who's, you know, won everything done um, well. and done really well at United. Um, so those would be Probably my three, but when I watch Rod, we obviously played Rodri not long ago and, you know, the way he is on the pitch, he's incredible. But, you know, I think Deck's got a bit of everything as well. I think, I honestly do think Deck can play as the holding one if you want him to, but then he can get into the box and travel with the ball as well. And he's just got, I, I think he's got a bit of everything as Deck. So that's Declan, Rodri, Casemiro, noted. Um, in no particular <laughs> order. In that particular <laughs> order. Okay, moving it back to yourself, like, you know, I know we're talking about other players here, but did you feel a personal sense of responsibility uh, when you saw Deck go? Because I've, I've just seen a different, I don't know if it's a mentality in you, I don't know if it's if I'm seeing you a little bit differently now, but what were you feeling? Are you feeling like you got West Ham on your back now? Mm. No, yeah, I definitely feel a massive part of this club now. And I think the summer has obviously took that to another level, you know, scoring a winning goal in a European final to win a trophy for this club. It's, yeah, you feel without saying it in a disrespectful way in terms of being big-headed, but you feel like a real main part of it. You feel like, not the main guy, but you feel like you're one of the ones that has to step up in those situations when things aren't, you know, things aren't going right or things are required from you. And I, I think of my position as well um, as being an attacker. I've, I've got to be the one that has got to create or got to score the goals. And I like that responsibility. I want to score goals and I want to, you know, assist goals. I want to score goals more because I love scoring goals. But... You know, I think that's that's what's expected of me. And I've kind of, this season, relished it. Um, I think last season was not my best season. I think people will probably forget it because of, you know, the goal and, and whatever. But in terms of my one-to-one standards of what I expect of myself, I was at a level that I didn't expect of myself. So I think this season, it was about having a good pre-season. Felt like I had a good pre-season, getting confidence from that, scoring goals and that, and take it into the start of the season. Because I think confidence, especially as a forward player, Everything you feel like you're touching is going in the back of the net. You saw my header at Luton, which you now I said it had a lot of power in it, but you know it's probably straight at the goalkeeper. But when those things are going for you, they go for you. So I think confidence is a massive thing of it. And, and like I said, I, I want to step up and be the one that decides games. Do you, for do you set yourself targets? Do you say to the beginning of the season, I'm an attacking player, responsibilities on me, I'm the guy at West Ham now, and this is the number I need to get to, goals and assists? Yeah, I think you'd be wrong if you weren't. I'm always looking at double figures, goals and assists. Um, you got a number? Can you give us a number? Premier- if I get double goals and figures Premier League, I think that's the first aim. Um, and, and then whatever you get after that, you want to keep scoring. But I'm always looking at 20, 30 goal involvements a season because if you want to compare yourself and you want to go up another level and you look at Salah, you look at Saka, you look at Mares over the years, the numbers that they produce, um, that's the level and that's the benchmark for me. So... 
those are the levels that I want to get to. Let's talk about England for a second, Jared. What's the frustration like at seeing the team sheet come out or the squad list come out and the likes of yourselves and James Ward Prowse not involved? Do you think there's a something to do with playing for West Ham there where you're not getting looking and some other players might be? No, I couldn't. No, because I, I think that's not for me because I've had the opportunity. I played four times at West Ham. So I know that the opportunity is there for me to, to get back in that squad. Um, you know, I had four caps. Um, obviously, I want, I want more and want to be in the squads. But you get that from going back to the conversation we just had of scoring goals, creating goals, doing what, what you do. But to get back in that England squad is, is my aim. Um, you know, there's that feeling, that first feeling I had, hungry away of putting on that shirt for the first time, singing the national anthem was, you know, probably the proudest moment of my life. So, of course, I, I want to get back in those squads. But I think I made a bit of a mistake last year of coming back and there was a World Cup around the corner. And I think I let it play on my mind too much in that first, what was we, four months of the season um, to get into the World Cup squads. And I, I think that's why it probably affected my performances. And I probably wasn't happy with my performances first half of the season because I was thinking too much of, going to the World Cup, I was probably trying to look too good instead of playing my own game to that would get me there in the first place. So I've got to go back to the basics of what got me in that England squad. And, you know, if it happens again, it will be amazing for me. If it doesn't, I'll make sure it, I keep working to try and get back in that squad because ultimately that's where you want to be. You've got a big tournament coming up next summer. Um, so that's obviously in the in the back of my mind as well. This um, this just lightened the mood a little bit. I want to go back to when you 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 won that trophy in the last season. What were your movements like? One on the dance floor, and <laughs> two for the rest of that summer in terms of what you got up to. Because I know when when you win, you become a different different animal sometimes, and it's it's beautiful. But he's a dad though, so it might be a little bit different though, isn't it? What dance moves? Well, no, yeah, no, the general. little babies are two weeks old. Two weeks but, old. You know, I was away for long enough. You could that not I could have an excuse that to get out of the proud. house, yeah, and go and enjoy yourself, oh. and winning, scoring, and winning goal. So you're telling me, yeah. big, big man Bowen wasn't doing the shifts? No, you must have had a few shifts. days off from the shifts. No, no, uh, I was. I had a week off for that. I was week straight of just Prague dance floor moves. I can't dance, but when I'm Add a, add a few or something, I might, you know, fancy myself a bit more and have a bit more confidence and then you never know what's what's going to come out. But Where did you go? No, those, where did you um, go? Those celebrations. Poor. I, where did I go? I didn't, I didn't go abroad. How about that? You just went pub, local pub. Because I came back. It. That would have been sick. Yeah, literally grapes. just had my mates around. <laughs> uh, just had a massive party here for about a week. Like it. People were just coming in and out, my mates and my family. Um, we were just... People had the medal on walking around the gaff and that was, <laughs> it was unreal. Um, so it was probably probably better than going going away. And then you obviously got the two little babies there as well. And no, nah, those those three weeks were poor. Th those will take some topping as well. What's the what's the most common thing that people like say to you now when they see you? Obviously now you're like a walking legend, legend. isn't it? Legend, they so, call like, him legend. Yeah, like what what what's the difference? Because obviously it's only been a few months, but what have you noticed? Um. No, there was a there was a couple that people would just say like I love you from that goal. Like people just love that goal, and like I said, you don't probably realise how much it mean, means to people um, and West Ham fans that that one goal to win the trophy. Enjoy it. <laughs> I appreciate Enjoy it, man. It. Listen, thank you so much for coming on, Jared. We really appreciate it. I know it's you know in the middle of the season and stuff like that. It makes it even better. I just wanted to pitch to you that there's some really nice houses in North London. If you ever felt like moving a little bit but uh yeah make sure you keep on playing well yeah, and we look you. forward to seeing your progress during the course of the season bro thanks for coming on no thanks good to speak to all of you thank thanks you a lot, man. appreciate enjoy it. See ya. hopefully that's not your last good big moment in the west ham shirt either no 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 definitely not <laughs>